I've been using this tent for just about two weeks now, and I really, really like it. I got the Hyperlite mid one tent because I wanted to shave some weight off my backpack when I am out in the woods alone. This tent is made of very lightweight materials, uh, DCF5 and 10, and a thin uh, bug net, and weighs just over one pound, barely over one pound. It's supposed to be about eight and a half by five and a half by five and a half inches when it's packed. So I imagine it will compress down a little bit more. There's, there's room here to compress it further. It's nearly completely waterproof. I've stayed completely dry as far as rain is concerned inside the tent for rain almost every night the last two weeks. I'm not using a ground cloth and the bathtub, the floor has held up very well on some rocky ground, some rough ground, no signs of damage yet. And also even on some fairly wet ground with just the single layer, the inside has stayed completely dry. This tent doesn't have a lot of features. It's very lightweight, but it does have just the features you need. It's got good tie outs for all the walls so that they don't flap too much. It's got one little mesh pocket here, but not a lot else. I think if I were to add one feature myself, it would be something up here to hang things from. Either a pair of socks that I'm drying or a headlamp to give light to the whole tent. Another great thing about the tent is its length. I can lie fully stretched out with plenty of room below my feet and above my head so that my feet nor my head are touching the walls of the tent. This tent does take a little bit of tweaking to get set up just right so that the walls of the tent don't slope too far and aren't really close and shrink this space in here down too far. I was going to talk about a few negative things I've noticed, but I'm sure it's too loud with all the rain. This tent is fairly easy to roll up and fit back in its bag as well. This is one thing I like about this tent. The material is light enough that you can roll it up with one hand. And then the magnetic stay here, you can also do it with one hand in case you have something else in your other hand or in case you want to stay inside your tent to avoid bugs or, or cold or anything like that. At first, when I saw this zipper design, I thought it was kind of dumb that you have this curve here with this gap between the trekking pole and the zipper that you clearly can't climb through. But as I've been using this tent more and more, especially with my head on the non-zippered side, it's kind of awkward to reach around the pole outside and access this vestibule up here. But this extra little section makes it really easy to reach an arm out and access my shoes, whatever else you have up here. Another great feature is this tie down. It doesn't just work on one side of the vestibule. It's got a nice little clip here and you can switch it. There's a clip on both sides of the vestibule so you can decide which side you want open or both sides. One of the downsides of a pyramid tent this small is it's a little bit awkward to get in if you want your head on the zipper side. So you can scoot way back and crunch your legs way up and then stretch out and it works okay. The problem is you often have to rub the back of your head or your back on the tent, which if there's a lot of condensation, it's not ideal. And maybe it's just that I'm not flexible and have kind of long legs, but that's a little bit awkward. It's not a huge problem. I've, I've learned to deal with having my head on the side that doesn't have the mesh zipper, and it just takes a little bit of thought when you're setting it up. So it's not a big problem, but it does remove a little bit of flexibility. That actually leads to the second problem, and that is condensation. I know that can be a problem with any tent, but this tent is a little finicky in how you set it up so that you have enough uh, air movement around the mesh around the outside. 
and even when it doesn't rain it'll fairly often be wet on the inside it is long enough that it's not a huge problem in terms of getting my head or my feet wet but it does seem to uh, gather condensation as much maybe more than other tents i've used the floor seems to hold up fine to camping on gravel and rocks as long as it's not too sharp though i imagine the stretching that occurs may end up shortening the life of the floor some if you uh, camp on rocks a lot one other feature i really like is this double zipper it uh, unzips from the top or the bottom and it allows you to set up in the rain and just reach inside keeping both flaps closed keeping the inside dry but it also allows you to get some extra ventilation without sacrificing the tautness of the lower edge here because of the dyneema and because of the pyramid design this tent is a little bit loud in the wind the walls flap in a gentle breeze like it is right now it's it's not unpleasant on a really windy night this can move around a lot and one night it kept me up a good bit of the night a very blustery loud windy night even with earplugs in on warm sunny rest days the sun comes right through this thin material it's very hot in the tent and also i would probably get a sunburn through here it's pretty easy to fix though what i do is i throw my raincoat hood on the pinnacle of the tent and let the coat right, uh, drape down over the tent and give me some shade and that makes it much more pleasant in here. This is the end of my trek and the end of 20 days using this shelter. Because of how light it is, because of how easily it sets up and how quickly it packs up, and also because of how dry it kept me and the length of the shelter, this is one of my favorite shelters I've used in a long time.